What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course for Friday. Man, sliding into the Fridays again, feeling good. Busy week. Actually, my week was a little wild. I had a um, kind of an allergy thing and had some events at work, but all is good because it is Friday, and that means it's time for the Ham Radio Crash Course. People are already rolling into the chat room. Some stuff going on. Awesome, as always. Thank you, everybody. I'm trying out some major new settings here on the stream. I believe, um, <laughs> along with my trials and tribulations, that I have solved some of my video problems. It may be temporary, and I may have to eventually move to a different streaming rig, but I think um, I think we've made some progress. So hopefully things sound good and they'll look good going forward for this uh, fun stream. I get asked a lot, a lot, you know, what do I do now? I got my technician license. What's the next step? And and it it kind of it, it comes in sorts of different ways. They're asking a question like, hey, what's a good uh, radio to step up from from a Baofeng? Or um, what radio should I buy? Or I visited a club, just one club, and I had a hard time, right? All these things, oh, I should mute that right now. All these things are indicative of uh, somebody starting out, right? Or they'll ask a question that's kind of like really open-ended. You know what they're looking for they're looking for more information on how to get started with amateur radio so what's up again guys it is friday um i'm gonna try and run three different not nets but if you want to talk i've got the radios on and listening Just tell me in the chat if you want to try and you have a question related to the topic we'll give it a shot it should be fun but no worries if we can't make it happen um, also, my beam antenna should be here probably in the next week or two. Very excited to get that on the roof, which that's going to be pretty awesome. Got Colorado, Colorado checking in. Truth Telling Mofos in Cincinnati. Got Carl from Malaysia. Um, there's a J. Oh, there's a JSA QSO party going on right now. Oh, I'll have to check that out after the stream. And a couple of Coloradoans. What do you call a, uh, multiple people from Colorado? Coloradians? Colorodians? Very nice. Uh, just a quick, here's my computer. Um, I had this taken apart uh, to ended up pulling out the video card and putting that in the oven um, <laughs> and cooked it. And it fixed the video card, among other problems. So, um, man, crazy week. So not really a lot of news moving forward with radio, right? If you're particularly a newcomer, which I feel like we've got kind of a new a new group of newcomers coming into the Ham Radio Crash Course, which is awesome. But we kind of have to retread some of our ground because some things have changed. My opinions have changed. And so I, I'd like to kind of say, what do you do now if you're, if you're going to be an amateur radio operator? And I've got some ideas. It's not all the ideas. And I will take comments in the chat. And we can we can take questions or whatever as we go along. So keep that in mind as we move forward. Um, mo again, moving forward, moving forward with radio uh, recommendation or homework for today, this week, if you will, until we meet again. Find out what your local Aries or Races is in your area. Go look that up because I am going to mention emergency preparedness in my what to do next, and I think that's a good area to get started is Aries and Races. So, um, yeah, Buena Park. Somebody says they're in Buena Park. You could probably just drive over to my house right now and be on the street. Uh, don't, don't do that. <laughs> uh, okay, so I don't really have a lot of news. I'm going to jump right into the brew crew. This is a special brew crew. Is this big honking jug that's got my, my initials on it. So this is full of my almost three and a half years old uh, sizer, I guess you could call it, that I made. It was It's half mead. Half apple wine, believe it or not. So I'm going to pour some of this out and I'll let you take a look at it. This is all made by me. I had about three gallons of it that I was experimenting with. I put it in this carboy because I didn't want to cork it up because I figured we'd drink it at this party we had last week. But it, it, it survived. I only went through one bottle of it. Um, so, yeah, there it is. You can see me. Ooh, look at that. See me in the background. Ooh. strong man that um that's a good holiday that's a good holiday wine right there i made this with a, a mead that i used um champagne yeast on so it came out like rocket fuel 
and I mixed it with an apple wine that had a bit more residual sugar, and I threw in a couple of uh, cinnamon sticks just for added measure. This is holiday-tastic, perfect time for October to stuff. Okay, so not a beer today, but that's all right. Got to mix it up. That's for young stomach, someone says. No, it, it, I wouldn't drink a ton of it, but it won't mess you up. It, I, I racked it many times. It shouldn't have sat on any of the lees and had any... Um, I can't think of the term now. Anyway. All right, so what are we talking about? Well, you got your license, now what? There's so many things to cover in this area, but I'm going to hit some of what I think is the most important things. So what's most... Oops, I don't know, decided to hop right up there. Don't need that. There you go. So what's next? Probably get a radio. Now, I know somebody mentioned Echolink in the chat. Uh, you don't need a radio to do Echolink, but you do need a certified FCC license to set that up. I have uh, feelings about Echolink that I have mentioned in other streams. Echolink is great, except that um, depending on how active and passionate the people are on your repeater, they might not give you enough time between keying up and keying down to get in there and, and, and hold a QSO for very long. Echolink's a fun thing to try, but nothing beats an actual, you know, physical radio in your hand. Okay? Makes sense. So get a radio. You probably have a VHF, UHF radio if you're watching this. I'll assume you have at least a Baofeng. If not, um, by the way, there's going to be a ton of links. There are a ton of links in the description. It took me a while to curate all the links for all the videos we've already already covered. So if you're kind of new here, maybe you subscribed after watching the FCC video and you kind of resonate with some of the topics in the description, please check out the links. They cover many, many different topics and they'll go into much, deep, much, much greater detail than we're going to go in today. This is more of an overview, if anything. So... Um, there's also a getting an SDR. You, you could think about getting an SDR, which we did a review on the SDR Play a couple weeks ago, and I've done a... Uh, <laughs> somebody asked a question, is my Baofeng now contraband? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. To be honest with you, I haven't seen any new FCC uh, updates on that whole Baofeng thing. So we, we are keeping an eye on it, but at this time, I don't think they are. But um, there will be more discussion on that for sure. So with the SDRs, a lot of them are receive only, unless you're getting something like a hack RF. So keep that in mind. Um, you don't need to have your license to have an SDR. I suggest people buy a couple of them if you're going to get the USB dongle types or pick up an SDR Play. It is about $120 for the base model one. But man, oh man, is that a great radio. You'll be able to experiment with so many things with that radio. So highly, highly recommend that. So... The next thing is, so you got your VHF, UHF radio. What are you going to do with it? Well, of course, you got to you got to have simplex. You got to know to work simplex, which is you know one point six point five two zero on VHF, and I can't remember the one off of UHF in my head, but you can look up a list of simplex frequencies, and all those are is kind of like the walkie-talkie-ish frequencies you'd use to call out for somebody, call out CQ. You know, who's in my local area? Hey, I need help. My cell phone's not working. I'm hiking, whatever. Case in point, I'm in Cerritos, California, and about a week ago on 50 watts with my 18-foot vertical ground plane antenna, I was talking to someone in San Diego. So that was awesome. So, of course, load up some simplex frequencies that are popular. I like 146.520. I think it's a bit better than the UHF frequencies. So I'm primarily on that one. And then the repeaters I use are mostly on UHF. So what do you do? Well, there's a video for that. It's in the description. But I recommend you load up all your local repeaters. Use something like Chirp. And since you're new, you can't really expect to know all the best uh, repeaters in the area. So always be scanning, right? Recommend that you get the radio functioning, get it going, and scan all the time. You want to try and figure out patterns of repeaters because some pe repeaters will be just frank frankly dead. They won't have anything going except for their net that they do. And it could be a more than once weekly net. Some of the best ways you can figure all that out is if you like the repeater and you, you get the frequency and you hear the net, or maybe it's just dead and you're like, well, I don't, I don't know, is it really that dead? Search the call sign of the repeater and that usually will yield some kind of website or some kind of information about the owner. Owners are often 
a repeater group that seeks donations or memberships, or they're a club that owns it. Either way, by Googling the call sign, you can get a really good idea of what that club or group or repeater is up to. Schedule of events, maybe they have actual meetups that do that kind of whole thing. So make sure that you get it all programmed and ready. And try, like I said, try to use it throughout the day to figure out when people are on. And this is basically what you're going to do. You load up the repeater. You're, this is maybe it's the first time ever um, on the radio. You're going to key down. <laughs> you're going to say, this is, then state your call sign. And you're going to say radio check. And you're going to let go of the key. That's how I got started. You're just going to say radio check. How am I sounding on the repeater? Ideally, this would be on a repeater that people are talking on. That is always helpful. But if not, um, you could be calling into the darkness because there might not be anyone listening. So keep that in mind, too. Ken K asks, how up to date is Repeater Book? Repeater Book, I believe, well, the website, I believe, is fairly often updated. But if you got a quote unquote repeater book, those are usually updated yearly. So, and sometimes repeaters go. So what happens a lot, that's part of the problem with repeater books is sometimes repeaters will change PL tones or they'll change um, offsets. And that can cause the repeater information to be bad. You might be on the right frequency, but you might not be hearing anything because you don't have the right PL tone to receive or to get into the repeater. Or you'll probably be receiving, but you won't know how to get onto the repeater because you'd be on the right frequency, but you won't have the right PL tone. Or your offset could be wrong, which is just all kinds of stuff to, to keep in mind. So what about mic fright? So I'm a, I'm a weirdo. I don't have any problem picking up a little black box like this and just talking. I, I try not to be a jerk and I try not to step on anybody and I, and I, I do wait. Always wait to receive as long as you can before you actually start to transmit, right? You really want to um, listen five minutes, some people say, before you say anything. Wait to give everybody enough time to understand what's going on in the repeater. Sometimes they behave differently. Some repeaters are real loose with the way they talk and how they how they behave themselves. Other people are very serious and they give very large spaces between talking. So you want to make sure you don't step on that or talk out of turn. So what you want to do to get over mic fright is to separate you from the conversation. Talk about things that are abstract, like how does my receive sound? What kind of better radio could I have? If you don't have, you don't have to buy it. You're under no obligation. But but move the topic off of you and keep it more on what you know or what you're interested in. Ask questions about what. Oh my God, the dog is crying <laughs> again. Why? Again. Dog. Jeez. I think she did that last week too. She gets right at my door and goes. Burr, burr, burr. It's like a baby crying to me. I can't, I can't think if I, don't, if I don't take care of it. Sorry about that. So make the discussion or the topic of whatever it is you're doing about what you could do to kind of improve your situation, improve your station, improve getting um, better acclimated to amateur radio. And you'll be surprised. People that are on amateur radio are usually really, really interested in talking about what they think about amateur radio. So you will get an earful. Now, you don't have to go buy any of this stuff, but it gets the ball rolling. It gets your name out there. And you'll find, this is just personal, behind the lines. Um, yes, I do need a spell checker. <laughs> I apologize for that. Sometimes my grammar and spelling is really bad because I just try to just go as fast as possible. So anyway, sorry about that for those of you that are really spelling crazy. Reading between the lines here, the more you talk on a repeater, the more you will get well-known, the more you are well-known the more clout, quote unquote, clout you'll have on the repeater, particularly ones that aren't major connected net systems like the wind system or whatnot. A lot of things that you'll find um, when you're talking on repeaters, not a lot of people are using handy talkies. Some will, but the real active people are either on mobiles in their car or they're on some kind of base station. That could be a mobile radio masquerading as a base station or it could be an actual desktop base station 
radio. In some cases, people could be running amps and have very, very powerful, uh, really nice antennas, the whole nine yards. So people generally really, really, really want to talk about their, their station. So do engage with people and you will get really, really good information if you do ask that. If you are hearing people talk and they're blatantly wrong, not about a personal opinion, because that'll lead to a whole bunch of problems, and you don't want to have your first uh, your first discussion out of the gate where you where you're talking crap to somebody, but you know something that that they don't know, or or you've got a new piece of information or something like that, you're always welcome to just say the word break, and if they're willing, they might pause and say go ahead breaking station, and then you announce yourself and say hey. Uh, new information has come out on this, blah, 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 blah. And then, boom, you're in the discussion. You probably can let it go back to them, but they may throw it back to you or they may pause and allow you to talk. I have been on um, roundabout discussion. Hey, Carrie's in the house. Good to see you, Carrie. I've been on roundabout discussions where we've had four or five people that were all waiting on their turn to talk, and it was a roundtable discussion. Roundtable because you're literally all holding the conch, if you will, the, the PTT on your radio and talking. Ethan says break or the last three of your call. Some people don't like uh, break because it's too CB. Yeah, um, I the the thing with the the thing with break is everybody understands what it means. The problem with the call is somebody just says NAZ and they're gonna go okay. Some people are better at than others, granted, but it and again this goes back to the. Culture of the repeater. Repeaters have different cultures. So this is uh, the repeater I talk on most of the time, which is the Santiago Peak repeater. And that is their propagation space, all that green area. So basically, if you're anywhere from Thousand Oaks south to, what is that, Carlsbad, you're covered by that repeater. In fact, whenever I go down to San Diego, I can I can sometimes make that repeater all my way down on 50 watts. So comment is good too. Rob, call, good Good comment from Rob. Uh, comment is probably a preferred vernacular to break. It depends on your repeater. So. I would also recommend that if you are new and you only have a Baofeng, don't mention you have a Baofeng. Say you have a Yesu, six, uh, Yesu FT60. Just say that. Just say it. Who cares? You may not ever meet these people. And if you ever do meet them, it's probably going to be months later and you could be like, oh, yeah. That radio, it's great. Um, and then go out and buy an FT70 or something like that, or FT60. You don't have to say you have a Baofeng, but understand, people will be straight up, they will turn off to you completely if you, um, in some cases, if you have a Baofeng. It's just the way it is, so keep that in mind. You don't have to say you have a Baofeng, say you got something else. Um, this isn't a Baofeng, but Baofengs have little mic holes in the front. This is just a, a pro tip. You can take the clamshells off with a screwdriver and you can get like a soldering iron or a Dremel. Bore that mic hole out a bit. It'll improve your mic quality, quality a ton. I would recommend that. Okay, so you're enjoying talking on repeaters. You're using them. You've got multiple of them programmed on your radio. Maybe you even have gone on long distance trips where you've Use Chirp to pre-stage all the repeaters you're going to use. I've done this before. Uh, that can be a bit troubling because you're not sure if the repeaters are populated or not. So I would use, I would load a couple of them in and see how well you can do coverage along the way. This is when simplex is important. For those gaps in, in repeater space, always make sure you're using simplex. So consider joining a repeater group or club. Uh, clubs are not always tied to repeaters, but some clubs have repeaters. But there are groups, it's like a, a repeater ownership club. They don't meet to do anything other than repeater stuff. Usually it's a fun stuff like barbecues, that spark repeater, they do barbecues and sometimes they'll help people set up. Um, oh man, Steven, I'll come back to you in a second on the Hilltopper 20. They'll do barbecues, they'll do other things um, that are just fun. It's a camaraderie thing. You will find that Groups that revolve around repeaters are more about personal friendships, and ham radio clubs are about ham radio. There may be personal friends, but it's personal friendship revolving around ham radio. A lot of the guys on the Spark Repeater meet to go have drinks and, and barbecue and all that fun stuff I've already mentioned. Uh, okay, so I'm going to do a 
don't look behind the curtain thing. This isn't going to show up because it's a green screen. Oh, but Hilltopper 20 is complete. Oh, it makes me disappear. Woo! It is complete. I'm planning on doing a whole video on this. The the death and rise of the Hilltopper 20. Uh, I have a Amazon USB microscope in the mail to actually show you the PCB and show you what happened and how it was fixed. I needed help. Let me just say the thing that I did, I didn't release all the smoke, but some smoke was released and I needed to call in backup to support you, support me. And that's okay. I've, I've made lots of uh, kits. Um, hey, that's something to do in ham radio. Build some kits. Build some cheap kits. Start with a pixie or something like that. Uh, but yeah, that was, uh, that was the first time I've ever had a catastrophic problem with a kit. Let's see. Go into the chat here. Ben says, I did that for my upcoming trip. Programmed all the repeaters on my route. Yeah, and I, I wish I could tell you there was an easy way to do that. There really isn't. You can try and reach out to people you may know in the area that are hams or... If you're lucky, some of those repeaters, the popular ones will anyway, will be on Broadcastify. So you can kind of go across the country or wherever you're going, search Broadcastify for that area and see what repeaters are popular and in use, and then program those. Andrew says, I've been to two club meetings I'm already put in as a treasure for next year. You sucker. No, I'm just kidding. That's awesome. I tried the repeaters loaded on most of the places where I like one person. Yep. Okay, right on. My David Brown says my FT60 is nice. Thinking of a Baofeng repeater on a weather balloon. Oh, like two two Baofengs? That's an interesting idea. Okay. So now you're starting to get more active in amateur radio. You're you've done the repeater thing. Why don't you look at an on-air event? Uh, ARRL does VHF UHF contests. They do contests throughout the year, but they have three different VHF UHF contests a year. And there are links in the description to the ARRL. You probably just want to go to the group link that's in the bottom, find a group. But then once you're there, go to the calendar for events and they'll have physical meetups, ham swaps, uh, hamventions, and then they'll have their on air events. So I would recommend that. I think that's a, um, I think it's a pretty good, Hey, look at that guy. Um, I think that's a pretty good thing to do is try out an on, on air event. And I say contest, but, but a lot of them aren't. A lot of them are just fun, enjoyable. They can be stressful. And it's really not about the points, it's about exercising your skills in amateur radio. So I highly recommend you check out an on orbit event if you can. So for me, whoop, is that somebody on the. Nope. Question over in the stream. Going to class in Lucas, Texas for general, then going to take the test. I watched your series and it was very helpful. I'll have to read the book before my class. So I can... Yeah, and also I would recommend using the practice apps. Uh, the iPhone has the ARRL version. I learned recently that there is no ARRL version for the practice apps on Android. And I know that uh, I saw Ethan and I saw Zach. They probably have opinions on what better apps there are or maybe you all do if you used an android app feel free to post in the chat and i'll mention it on what you found was good and he said your series was great but not all inclusive correct <laughs> i i never claim to be all inclusive i never claim to be doing a textbook class if i was i would be charging you money for it we're just having fun i'm having fun once it becomes work then i'll just go to work i make way more money doing that don't you Oh, am I getting messages? Is that what's happening? Yep, I'm getting messages. Bumper, uh, oh yeah. So, hey, I just got a DMR message from the talk group. Uh, talk groupin. Talk groupin. Uh, 146.52 bumper sticker, nice for travel. That is a damn good idea. Zach and Ethan both said ham study. Okay, there's an official. Oh, there you go. Official app. Oh, there you go. Go get ham study. I didn't even know that. I should have known that. Yeah, go get hamstudy.org. Okay, I've got more messages. Hold on, I'm just going to read my text messages in chat. Okay. KN4KVC says hi. Hello. Thank you for that. Okay. So what got me active in amateur radio was being prepared. Straight up. Emergency communications, 
living in California, being through the 87 Whittier Narrows earthquake when I was close, I was in Whittier and close to Whittier Narrows as a kid, really cemented in my mind the importance of being prepared. So to me, amateur radio is as important as having food, water, all the tools and batteries you need, and firearms. It's just one on the same level of important things you need for your life to be prepared. So it was a no-brainer. I fell really deeply into um, emergency radios, receive radios, like my my one of my Voyagers and other ones that I've shown on uh, that uh, shortwave radio stream. I did a review on this that's out there if you search for Cato. This is the Cato KA500. You'll see my review. Good radio for emergencies. But then I was like, well, what if you need a call for help? And then I fell down the rabbit hole of amateur radio. That was also assisted by the fact that I was a Boy Scout and I had a Scoutmaster who was an amateur radio. He was licensed. Not very good at teaching people. He couldn't... Something was going on with him that he couldn't ex describe to me how amateur radio worked. And, oh, it's it's APRS through DMR, Zach says. I should have known with the Dash 5. Thanks for the comment. Yeah, very good. So it's working. I'm getting APRS through my hotspot. Um, what's the wrench about? Somebody, Anthony Perez says. I love lasers. I am on upper sideband on 7.180. What is on, somebody asked again, what is on the 7.180 frequency? That would be me if somebody wanted to try and hail me on HF on upper sideband. So what did I say there? I wrote that slide. I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah. What that guy said. Start, <laughs> we know radio is a great tool for emergency preparedness. Start looking into the, uh, into what, into that, what that, geez, Josh, you are bad at writing spelling. Regarding operations and emergency and what kind of stations you need to be effective. So to go down that rabbit hole, your Baofeng is a fine two-way radio. It's not the best radio for emergency preparedness. Um, you need something more like a mobile, and you need a better antenna to be able to reach out. And then you possibly need HF, particularly NVIS, Near Vertical Sky. Getting all these messages. Hi, who is that from? Great. Not the best. Not the best, this interface. That was from 3114370. Hi. Right on. Um, oh, no, lower sideband. No, lower sideband. Sorry. You caught me on that one. There you go. Lower sideband. So VHF, UHF, really important, but you probably want to step up to mobile. Then eventually that will lead to HF, probably something with an NVIS antenna. So you get really good vertical 300 foot in um, radius type comms. And then you probably want to look at something like apparently Winlink. I'm not, I'm not up on Winlink. I need to do a Winlink video because that is apparently where everybody is at for the emergency preparedness. And it's basically email through HF. I'm not seeing anything on the waterfall, but if you say you want to try and hail me, I will, um, I'll stop and we can try really quick. So consider clubs. That's what it is. Skywave. I always get the, uh, the last word. I want to say it's, um, something else. Near vertical incident skywave, which just means vertical. You're shooting your RF straight up. It's, and it's coming back down and it's making a fatter footprint than kind of like a cone that comes back over itself. 2 a.m. Josh was writing slides. Not good. That's probably more true than it is false. Truth telling Mofo says, yes, do a Winlink video. I need to make a note of that, so I'll put it on the patron's pick. Or, um... And I'll get started on that immediately. I, I read or I listened to a podcast on it. It was very interesting. Um, Yeah. Skywarn is also a great group to get involved with if you enjoy weather. Yes. So the Skywarn, that's for air, that's for people that have real weather. They live in a in a climate or area where people have to, you know, battle with actual harsh weather, possibly tornadoes. So Skywarn goes hand in hand with ham radio as well. 
So be prepared. And, uh, and, and it's a, it's a stepping stone thing. What you'll find is you're like, I need a lot of FRS radios to hand out to my neighbors so we can all see in comms. Okay, good. I need a bell fan so I can talk to the amateur radio group or Aries or whatever. Okay, fine. You're like, well, I need a more powerful radio with a, you know, some kind of mobile mount system, car mount, whatever. Okay. You can see it starts incrementally getting more and more and more. And you go, okay, well, now I need um, an HF that can work with a computer, and I need an Envis, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And all of a sudden, you look back, it's five years later, and you're like, oh, my God, I had a blast. Amateur radio is amazing. Somebody asks, Lewis Ray asks, so 73 or 991A? 7300. So that's in reference to the ICOM 7300 or the Yaesu 991A. Both are good radios. The 991A has way more band, well, not way more, but has band access through VHF, UHF, and it does Yaesu System Fusion, which if you like that, it's kind of like an all-in-one radio in a box. However, it's not an SDR, and its waterfall is not really that good. I did not like operating it next to the 7300. They're right next to each other at HRO, and I was like, man, there's no contest for me. So, Comms Prepper has some functional long-distance wind-link videos. Ill uh, Ill Illiterate Beef says, yes, Comms Prepper is uh, generally pretty good stuff with emergency comms. So I watched many of his videos. And Zach also says WinLink isn't just for HF. They have UHF protocol and repeater system too. You can use a Baofeng and TNC or a PRS cable. There you go. Yeah, WinLink is just like another digital mode. If you have enough people using it, then you can use it on whatever band that you've got access to. So absolutely. Um, see. Cole, mm, Cole Korth. Cole Korth. I think I did this the last time. Sorry about that. Technician, 10 meter digital, PSK, RIDI, etc. Going into HF digital mode. So yeah, I have multiple uh, videos on digital modes. You absolutely can do digital modes on 10 meters. The problem with the bands being kind of shoddy these days is that when 10 meters opens up, what people are grabbing, what mode they're, they're grabbing to use is not any of those modes. They're all on FT8. So we had a big hole open up on 10 meters, and I was rocking contacts. Very awesome. It was it was banging. It was like 40 on a on a clear night. It was great. And it was right in the middle of the day. And that was all FT8. Everything else was pretty much quiet. So make sure you consider that. So oh. What happened? Okay, consider clubs. I didn't even get to this slide. I put it over. So clubs introduce you to all the other aspects of amateur radio. I look at a club as like, I can kind of do everything on my own as a technician, and I can kind of Google and YouTube my way through all this stuff, but if I want to make that next step into HF and being a general, then a club's really helpful for that. Because they give you access to contesting, CW and Morse. There are a lot of CW and Morse operators in clubs. Field days, like most, a lot of clubs have really, really fun field day events. So you got to make sure you check that out. And then just regular events like uh, W6TRW has their swap meet every week or every month. And every month they do their testing at the same time for license upgrades. Great. Kit building. I already mentioned kit building. But yeah, absolutely. You got people there that are, are real smart people who probably a little bit older, and they probably built all of their own amateur equipment. It's only been the last, what, 40 years or so, which that seems like a long time, where really the majority of, of equipment is these commercial off-the-shelf jobbers. A lot of the HF and, and base station radios are either repurposed military equipment or modified CB or homebrew stuff. So a lot of smart older people that can show you a lot about electronics. And I found as being a young person that is more interested in software and the internet of things that I didn't really know enough about electronics. And I kind of had to go back to basics and, and learn a lot more. So, yeah. Somebody said, uh, got Zello. Yeah, I don't really use Zello. Uh, PB Shooter Google says there is a Skywarn all over the place. Oh, in Kansas? Yeah. Um, so the enforcer, believe it or not, 
So you will find that there's at least one or two people in a club, even much older than you probably, that are still avid tower climbers. Very interesting. People who they call like, oh no, that's the guy. You got to talk to that guy. Dean Johnson. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate that. Had trouble with my card. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> you, don't, you don't owe me, buddy. I appreciate that. Yeah, and definitely don't. I definitely don't max out your credit card on sending me a tip, but I thank you. I appreciate it. That orange is mighty pretty, too, there on the screen. Oh, man, Dean Johnson. Oh, yeah, uh, I got a, I, I sent you, a, I think I sent you a message over there. I think I sent it through Patreon. Anyway, um, yeah. So, I, big green box in the bottom. Clubs gain you access to parts of radio you probably don't know about or have the bankroll to experience by buying on your own. That's really what you're doing here is you're not going to have to buy all the things. There's lots of people in the club that have already bought some of this stuff. So let them let them do that for you and let's learn through them. So you're not using them. It's it's a it's a collaborative thing. But um, yeah. So clubs. Clubs often also have access to used gear, and that's the best way to get into HF in a lot of cases, is get some used gear. And it's coming from a club member, so they're, they're probably likely not to rip off their, their fellow club members by selling garbage. So, you know, make sure you look at it that way too. Members usually have proven ideas on what works for shack setups and antennas. This is a really, like, you got to think about it from kind of an older ham's point of view is, They've been doing something, and they've probably changed throughout the years, but they've kind of sharpened that spear to a point where it works pretty well for whatever it is they do. It may not be the most cutting-edge technology, but it works really well, and they may be making a ton of contacts or whatever it is they're, they're doing. So have kind of a, a... I'll get to that in a second. Find out which hams in the club are open to Elmering and ask them some questions. Now, I don't mean like pepper the crap out of them with questions it's kind of like ask a couple of questions and then say like hey you know if i have any more questions can i email you or can i text you or can i call you or what is your preferred your preferred means of discussion and hell buy them lunch show, take them out to lunch show them you appreciate them and and hams like golden corral that was <laughs> that's my joke apparently for the slides when i wrote these now um now i lost my point when i was talking about Elmering, Elmering. Ah, yeah. So I have found there is generally two types of people that are new to a club, regardless of age, that come into a club. And it's not even really a ham radio club. I've been to, like, self-reliance slash prepper clubs and gun clubs and all that stuff. And you have people that come in that are just, like, cool people. And they're, like, they know some things. They don't know everything. And if somebody talks about something they don't know, they're really cool. And they want to learn more. And then you got somebody else who comes in and they're like, oh yeah, I knew that. Or did you know this? Or, did, you, did you know this? this? Brand new people and they've got this attitude that they kind of know more than everybody. You might not as somebody that's new to amateur radio. Or maybe you watch some videos or maybe you read some stuff. And, and you could be right, but I've generally found if you just go there and experience it on their terms and have fun in the way they have fun you'll be welcomed in a bit easier and you'll have a better, a better time. This is kind of more life, a life lesson than it is a new ham lesson. But start out by just doing as the Romans do and then kind of pick it up as you go because there's still probably a lot of things you can learn. So make sure, make sure you be cool. Eventually, though, you're going to get, again, I got my license, now what? So... Time to upgrade is something that you'll eventually get to. Seldom are people just satisfied with a Baofeng. They may want multiple Baofengs, or they'll want to switch to an APRS type um, radio so that they can go hiking or whatnot, right? These would be pretty big upgrades. Now, I don't can, I, a lot of people say, well, if you have a bunch of handhelds, that's not a shack. Eh, I disagree because they all do something different. They all give you a certain different kind of communication and it's true with hts it's kind of single focused but it doesn't mean it's any less of a radio and it doesn't mean that you're any less of a ham by having a lot of hts but you might want to think about upgrading to a mobile in a car or an hf radio in the shack or maybe a mobile hf radio like um like we were talking about for emergency preparedness or whatever 
So uh, VHF Mobile, I already mentioned that. Make sure you got something that you can put in a car. If you have a much longer antenna, you will be able to work simplex much easier. So make sure you, you do that whole thing. And HF, of course, by getting access to HF, you get digital modes, you get CW, you can DX, you can contest, and you get special on-air events. Now, I want, I would like to pause one second and do a complete gear change. Zach, would you please post the link to the Discord? Because I bet there's people in the chat right now that may want to talk after the live stream, and we have a Discord set up just for that. And uh, it'll be mentioned again on the end, but I figured we'll say it up front here so that people can go ahead and get started with that if they'd like to hop over. We do a live chat at the end of every stream. The stream will be no different. So DMR, I know some of you are probably thinking, well, how does DMR fit into all this? Um, DMR is great. Um, I think that DMR is a step up from your entry level amateur radio operator. I think you kind of have to learn how to program a standard analog radio first before immediately stepping into the DMR experience. I know people do step right into the DMR experience, and that's fine. I'm saying that if you kind of had a choice of an easier go at it, you might want to think about an analog first and then a DMR uh, if you were planning on going further with amateur radio, if you know what I mean. Now... DMR and repeater is similar to analog. You set it up the same way, but then you have to eventually do all the DMR stuff with the talk groups and the receive side or the receive groups and all that. Hotspot though, Hotspot opens up really interesting things. There, I've got more messages coming in. Um, Hotspot's really interesting because that allows you to kind of almost do HF over the internet. You can talk to pretty much anyone through DMR and it really opens things up and makes it a lot of fun. And as I said, with a hotspot, you're allowed to control the talk groups you access without impacting repeater. This opens up long-winded rag chews and frankly is more fun. Um, so yeah, talking to people in Italy, right? Talking to people in Italy on a lunch, if you're out on your lunch at work, just chilling in your car, eating a breakfast burrito or whatever kind of burrito, and you're talking to somebody in Italy through the internet, through DMR. That's amazing. That's awesome. Hey, thank you, James Phillips. If you have a question, um, go ahead and follow along with that. Or if you want to send something like that, just make sure you leave a question if you have it. Anybody. Well, there it goes. There's the light. <laughs> uh, why? Okay. Somebody said illiterate beef, Wi-Fi and amateur band. It is MCOM's independent of internet service file shares. Yeah. Uh, I didn't talk about ham net or ham Wi-Fi in these slides because that's probably... That's a bit of a um, intermediate to advanced, I would say, with regards to entry-level radio. Let's read the text message. First DMR message. Howdy. So somebody sent me a message. Who was that? Why? So it, it. That's one thing I don't like about DMR. I don't care about the. I don't care about your DMR ID. I want to see. Oh, it's the DMR ID. I've got to load. Apparently, I got to load the new a new set. So DMR translates all IDs into call signs or all call signs into IDs. And you have to download usually a comma separated value file to, to do that conversion. This was updated, I don't know, probably a couple of months ago. So some people, um, uh, Hosh, oh, Hosh Nasi, have you used, this is from Ethan. Have you used your FTT, FT2DR on DMR? using your hotspot, how does it compare to using native DMR radio? It's not as good, and I have. Um, it's, I like Yesu System Fusion a lot. I think it's a really good digital mode. Sounds really good, and the added features, the menu system on it, at least through the FT2DR, is really, really cool. You've got to do this like DMR to Yesu System Fusion conversion via the hotspot, which was kind of a little janky and really what the problem was is that it was hard to operate a dmr radio on the same hotspot that you have um operating with the ft2 dr and i believe that is a, a time channel thing that the the hotspot is having issues negotiating that it's it just it's hard for it to oh that's what it was it was hard to join um using or use the ft2 dr while you had another dmr or doing both you know how it like cycles it'll do dmr and the system fusion or d star whatever it seems at least for mine 
that um hey brian jones w5 b d j was the last message thank you buddy um yeah so it, anyway it if you made it yesu to dmr only the hotspot it works great if you made it dmr only it works great when you try and do both at the same time it was constantly going back and forth which it has to it has to be listening constantly so yeah do traxicum of officinale join skcc to learn cw i will write that down i don't know that i am on skcd cc i'm okay on cw i love cw i mean you should do more videos on cw i think it's like the least popular videos that i put up but i love it uh let's see there was a Ah, somebody asked, have you tried D-Star? Found it extremely easy and very active worldwide. Very easy to set up. Everything but DMR in the digital space are very easy to set up. Yay, Sue System Fusion, you just type in your call sign and you're off to your rate off to the races. D-Star, same thing. DMR is way more complicated than that. Uh Lewis Ray says, Are you a part of a repeater group in your area? I used to be very active on the Spark Repeater. And then doing the YouTubes like this. I'm not on there that much anymore. And it's not because of them. It's because I'm just very busy. But I'm a big fan. Let's see. So always be learning. Um, there's a there's a real drop-off that happens with, with amateur radio, particularly new techs. They will get their license, and they'll never key up a radio. Some believe that's Mike Fright. Maybe. There is another reality that they will talk on repeaters for a little while get bored throw it on a shelf battery dies something happens and they don't come back that's a real thing so really what i'm saying is if you become disinterested in something reach out for help to fix the thing you're disinterested in or try something else step away from it and move into something else completely that that is interesting to you antenna building you can do that as a new ham. FM satellites, you can definitely do that as a new ham. Find a fox hunt. Sure, why not? Google fox hunts in your area or your county or your state or whatever. And attend a physical event. It's really weird that we're all, you know, we're all in the ether um, talking to each other via RF. But really, seeing people face to face and talking to them is amazingly powerful to keep people engaged. So. Um, I am monitoring now. If you would like to give it a go, Franklin Lewis asks about 7.180. So let's throw it over to the radio, Chuck. All right, there you go, Hosh. You're flipped over. All right, I'm looking at 7.180. Shoot. Shoot me that RF. I don't hear nothing. While I'm listening to the radio, I am using a Redivis RT82, which is a fine DMR radio, aside from this little trackball nubbin thing. Not a fan. The GD77 by Radio Oddity is a good um, entry level slash middle tier DMR radio. Oh, cool. Brian O'Neill says, hey, Hosh, first time on stream, long time watcher of your videos, which I enjoy. Uh, thank you, sir. The True Tally Mofo says a tape measure Yagi is a good, easy antenna build for techs. Absolutely. And then you can parlay that into working FM birds. Dan Hughes, I was listening to it last night. Very weird. Um, probably. I have Vox enabled what? Oh, no, that's a... Uh, it, sorry. I've got a gate. There, that's the radio noise. There's your white noise. KN4KGL, this is Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. How you doing? One of the things that fixed the stream. I'm good, uh, Josh. I just put on a hot spot on here and uh, thought I was coming in and uh, say hi. And uh, make sure I was in the stream, but... I've been busy lately and not been able to watch the stream, so I just wanted to say hi, and uh, hopefully the stream 
stream goes well. And uh, I'm going to uh, get, let you get back to it. See, so you just got a super chat, so I'll let you recognize it. <laughs> Uh, copy KBL, thanks. Yeah, uh, good talking to you, bud. I'll talk to you later if you're on the uh, the live chat. So what I've got in my mind before I do the super chat, um, the reason why you're not hearing... Uh, so the reason you're not hearing the, the white noise is one of the things that helped fix my chat issues was by raising the noise gate on my mic. So I'm hearing the white noise right now, but if I stop, you'll hear nothing. But I'm still fine. It's all there. But I just got to crank the white noise up a bit. There it is. Okay, so a serious unrelated ham radio question. Um, but it isn't a super chat, so I guess I'll answer it. This is like truth or dare um, super chat edition. What is your concealed carry? Sorry if this is uncomfortable. So in California, uh, particularly L.A. County, it is very difficult to get a concealed carry license. Very few people have that, for example. But if I were to conceal carry, um, it would either be my Ruger LCP or my Glock 19. But I never carry illegally because that would be wrong. That would be wrong. Um, all right. So I'm not here. Who was trying to call me? Oh, Dan Hughes, the renegade repeater. Yeah, 435, man. Don't listen to 435 if you don't have to. Pulling out my, my family stock here. Reloading. All right, bro crew, here we go. Okay. Well, I'm not hearing you, so what I'm going to do since the... Let me hit it below the gate. Oh, but you're going to hear it every time I talk, so, yeah. Um, yeah, so I've got a, a lower floor on my mic now. It seems to help things out, among other things, so. If you are trying to hail me on the radio, please mention it in the chat. Okay? All right. Oh, ADM, you missed my, uh, this I made. This is a three-year-old. Um, Sizer, which is a combination of uh, mead and apple wine. Yes. And it is, like, very strong. Upwards of 15%. Because uh, I use champagne yeast. <laughs> yep. Tapping off the tank, boys. All right. So always be learning because you will, people will naturally peter out. A lot of the reasons why people say, go get a club, go get a club, you're going to lose interest, go get a club. No, actually, go get a club, it's a lot of fun. What they're not saying is, we're worried you're going to lose interest, and then you're going to be no longer a ham or a ham in name only, and then we've got the problems with the hobby not living on. So that's why everybody says, go join a club, go be active on a repeater, go join a repeater club, go club, 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 is because there's... Just some kind of mental thing about being in a community that keeps people engaged. And so you you, you need that. Um, and we want you to be engaged because we want the hobby to live on. That's it in a nutshell, right? I mean, we want we want this to stick around. And if you get discouraged, part of the reason why I started doing the Ham Radio Crash Course was I was making these videos and I was getting so inundated with questions. Even back when I was posting those Baofeng videos years ago, just so many, so many questions from people. And they went beyond just Baofeng programming to like, you know, why does it say this in the book? How do I do this? I want to do that, blah, 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 blah. And I would say, oh, you know, I can help you a little bit, but reach out to a club. And, and a lot of people would come back and say, clubs around me are pretty bad. And, and I didn't, they called me a no code or probably not in so many words in his, in his face, but... It might have made him feel like he was unwelcome, or or she, I don't remember, but um, it's happened multiple times. So I made the Hammerino Crash Course, and the different things like Discord and, and, and sought help from other people who are smarter than me in the area because I felt it was the best way to keep people from getting discouraged. Um, that if you had somebody, not just me, but if you had somebody that was there and, and talking about it, they might know a little bit more and be able to help. So 
the Facebook page is growing like crazy from, you know, people wanting to have something like that. Maybe they can't find a club. And the Discord, I think, is the best. I, I love Discord. It's It's been a lot of fun. So, yeah. Just, and that's the last slide. And, of course, join the HRCC. There, There's... There's nothing better than than being in person if you can, but uh, I think the way what we're doing on the internet is is close to as just as good. It's not the best, right? But it's still pretty valuable, I feel. And so the links are in the description. You got the Facebook, you got the Discord, and there is Reddit, although I think Ethan is really our only major Redditor. I'm on there occasionally. And... Uh, he is in Madagascar and very busy with his life. So we get Ethan back here next month. We're very excited about that. And of course, there's the Patreon, the newsletter I post once a month. And there's some other cool details there if you'd like to check that out, if you want a sticker or whatnot, that kind of stuff. The link is in the description for that. Okay, do I have another slide? I do not. So let's switch back over to the radio. And I will open it up for a couple minutes here for questions. And then we'll probably wrap top of the hour and and we'll go over to discord jason brown says what would the next step up be from the red of us rt82 in your opinion um probably a kenwood d74 i mean at that point you're you're pretty high up on the dmr food chain you just probably get a different DMR radio. Because there's not many Japanese radios that do DMR at this point. Most of them are Chinese radios. All right, so hit me with your questions. Oh, shadow towing. I don't know if you're watching shadow towing. I, uh, I owe you. I, I got to talk to you after this. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, my G19 is the uh, Desert Tan one, too. Kind of limited edition Glock. I, have, I don't want to talk about guns. <laughs> if you want to talk about guns with me, go to gunchannels.com. I'm over there occasionally, but there's way smarter people about guns over there. And they also are, a lot of them are hands. Oh, so there's Zach. There you go, Zach. Maybe the maybe the high end any tones or Motorola's for DMR. Oh, good point. I totally forgot about Motorola's. Yeah, absolutely. Motorola's would be a good step up um, for a DMR radio. Good for good, Zach. Perfect. What is your receive antenna? Wayne asks. Uh, receive antenna for what, sir? I'm using a G5RV for receive and transmit right now, which I am upgrading. And I will get next, soon, I don't know if next week, I will be getting a Radio Waves beam, hex beam antenna. I'm very excited about that. Oh, yeah, Ethan comes in with the Motorola, something that's $1,000. $1, Shack mobile option. So The Enforcer asks, would you recommend a 7200 for Shack mobile option? Not exactly mobile, but... So I would ask, why not a 7300? Is there something that the 7200 does that the 7300 doesn't? Because frankly, I think the 7300 is... As, as far as the beginner radio goes, um, if, if somebody would have said, don't mess around with these QRP radios, although QRP is fun for soda... Get the 7300, save yourself some headaches, you'll love it. I would have been like, oh my god, radio's amazing. And I would have been like hitting it way harder than I am now, or earlier. Oh, tonight is Joda? Uh, Jamboree's on the air, is that correct? Let's, let's, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Contact. Oh yeah, man. Okay, so your homework. Well, I'm, I'm, I do have news then. What happened to my phone? Come on, bud. Come on, website, go.
Third weekend in October. There are no official hours, so you have the whole weekend to make Jota contacts. The event officially starts Friday evening during the Jota jumpstart and runs through Sunday evening. So if you have an HF, dial around the bands and listen for Boy Scouts that are calling uh, CQ Jota, okay? And answer them and be be stewards of radio. And and also plug the ham radio crash course. <laughs> Tell them Hosh Nazi sent you. Yeah, i uh big fan of that. I was a Boy Scout that I wish had, um, at the time, had more ham radio. We had one Scoutmaster, like I mentioned, but kind of not that great as a steward of ham radio. Um, Yeah, just be listening. Do we have bands? Do we have... Let's look up the bands, guidelines, fact sheets, planning, all signs... Do they have certain bands that they operate in? Band plan? Joda bands of operation. Oop. Scout frequencies. There you go. I knew they had to have something. Um, scout frequencies are shown in megahertz. So there you go. Let's see what the heck. Let's see if we can hear some scouts. I mean, it's kind of late. I don't know if they're... Oh, they got a CW portion? Nice. There's nothing going on right now, so... 40 is dead. Or it could just be my antenna. Let's hop over to 80 really fast and see. Let me switch over so, so you can see the... Uh... So 80... Three, nine, four, zero. No, nope, not AM. Kind of quiet. You got some voice going on out there, but not a lot. Oh, good. Um, Zach has posted scouting.org. Joda operation. Let me grab that. Thank you, Zach. Ninety twenty through ninety forty. I got a message. KN four KVC dash five test. Yes, test complete. There's somebody in the dirt in there. dirt not great let's go back down to this guy They just don't have that high a signal. Otherwise, that's with the attenuator on. Yeah. 
Yeah, if you could, give me some thumbs up. That would be appreciated. Brian O'Neill says, 25 years on CB, getting sick of CB, thought I would try ham radio. Looks interesting. I think the advantage that ham radio has over CW is you've got more access to things that isn't just voice. You can do digital modes. You can work satellites. You, you, there's just a lot to do. You can be very busy. Uh, preamp, I, I clicked it on accident because I was trying to activate the attenuator. I don't use the preamp on 80. I use the attenuator because it's usually knocking down the noise is the goal. Or a really powerful station. you got to knock that down. That is not a Boy Scout. That is a, an elderly, oh, no, not an elderly, but an older person. Yeah, see, it's just, there's signals out there, but it's just, it's not great. Got to wait a couple of hours and it'll be a lot better. Oh, DMR for Jodo is great, too. Is you just can dial up the DMR group. DMR907, Brian Jones is saying. Uh, Brian, thanks for all the great info and insight. Just join the channel. Oh, wow. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate that. Appreciate that so much. Sticker will be in the mail to you then. Um, make sure you do put in the address. I Patreon, man. Patreon and I had problems. Just made... Well, wow, I made my glass ring when I when I got hit that high note there. Uh, Felix says, "Hey, boss! Hey, boss! This is Felix, your new sub. I hope you are doing good. Did you receive my full description as best as I could?" Yes, you got a five nine on that on that comment there, bud. All right, Carl. Thanks, and uh, cheers from you to Malaysia. There, that's awesome. Carl is very active on the Discord, and he is in Malaysia. Interesting to hear kind of the, the differences over on their country, right, versus, versus where we're at. All right, Zach's got the info there. DMR907 is calling talk group, and the 9071 through 9078 for the QSO. Excellent. So that that's nice. They got they got some things worked out there. DMR could be a mess, I bet. It'd be stacked up like cordwood, all the people trying to make contacts. Well, I'm not going to have a lot of time this weekend. Maybe I'll bring a radio with me. Hmm. That might be fun. This is just the the next So I'm still going to be doing all the streams. Don't worry about that, but my the, the the next months through the end of the year is just crazy. It's crazy. It's it's just it's insane how busy um, I get. Me, my family, just. Uh, Dean Johnson, yeah, buddy, we gotta talk, man. I think I got it straightened out to you. Ho, oh, O H eight S T N is in the house. What's up, buddy? Anyway, I I saw you there. So cheers. How's it good to see you? Yeah, I was watching your video um, today, I think. Today or yesterday you posted one. Right on. Yeah, Finland. Awesome. Oh, yeah. What time is it in Finland? What is that? Um, 10 a.m.? Something like that. Oh, that's a good idea, Zach. Just keep at least a VHF UHF on you. I like that, Zach. I'll definitely have my Yesu on me because I'll be rocking APRS. But um, yeah, and I, it's obviously too late for the scouts, but that would be cool to um, to try and work some of them before I get busy tomorrow. Not like you know, <laughs> get busy when I get busy with life. <laughs> Jazz. Jas Key M. Josh, you need to make a trip to Colo. Uh, do you mean Colorado? Buddy, I was basically living in Colorado for a while. I was TDY there for work. I was like living in Colorado Springs um, in the Mining Exchange Hotel. Those guys know, be my, mo, know me by name. I love that. I love that city. I love Colorado Springs. I love most of the, the whole state. 
Except those freaks in Boulder. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, dude. I so upset that I didn't get a Pike's Peak activation. Uh, I was traveling real light and I, cause I was going out there for like two weeks at a time and I just didn't have, I didn't have any free time. I was working weekends. We were just crazy. And so I, I was like, should I take a radio? If I take a radio, it's just going to sit there and it's just one more thing that could potentially get stolen from a room, even though I, I didn't really think that was going to happen at the mining exchange. But Man, I uh, I really kick myself for not dragging uh, some kind of radio out there to do Pike's Peak. That would have been amazing. Matt M. asks, would you recommend getting a Kenwood THD-72A over a Baofeng as the first HT? Unless, Matt, you're coming right out of the gate wanting to do FM satellites or APRS, no. Get a Baofeng or... If you do want to spend more money on a better radio, go get a Yaesu FT-70D, um, FT-70R. Yeah, um, I love my D-72A, but I also hate it. I really don't like the menu system, but I love the fact that it's, um, it's dual simplex. So you can listen through the audio. So you connect headphones into the audio jack and you can listen to... to the same frequency or whatever frequency you're receiving on, you can listen to that while you're transmitting. So when you're working satellites, it is imperative if you can to, to use dual simplex because you can listen, you can listen and, and be receiving while you're transmitting. It's awesome. Very, very powerful capability to do that. And it's not in the D74. Um, I'm, I'm reading Zach's comments. Yep. Wayne Dixon says, I can key up Pike's Peak repeater from my patio 76 miles away. Yeah, because it's really high. <laughs> it's really high up there. Pike's Peak is nuts. The first time, the first time I landed in Colorado Springs, I was just like, what the hell? And then I was there in um, 2012 when they had that massive wildfire. There was flames licking over the top of the mountain. I'm just like, what the hell, man? It was like you were looking at some kind of battle that was just the, the, the damage coming over the top. It was wild. Pike's Peak and Laughing Lab Beer, that's all you need. Also, Jazz first name. Okay, you got it. So... Jazz, the pro I think it's Jazz. Am I saying that right? Or is it Jazz? Jazz. Uh, the problem with Pike's Peak for some people is they can't handle the altitude, man. It straight knocks them out. Yeah, exactly. 14,000 feet. Takes people out. I mean, I get all excited about Pike's Peak when I've got like Whitney. Whitney's closer than Pike's Peak to me. Dude, the flames were nuts, man. All right. So, we're we're all just shooting the uh, shooting the S here. So if we're good, I think we've got the questions all tamped down, tamping down those flames of questions. So I'm gonna head over to Discord. We can continue that there. But before I do, thank you to the patrons. I know we got a couple of patrons that hopped on today, so I appreciate you, and you'll get here on this list. But William Horton, Chris Ebert, Carrie Blackwell. I saw Click Carrie earlier on the chat. I hope she's still around. Didn't. I know she's busy too. Back to school. Jason Siebert, David Dancero. And I think we got a question too, so I'll, I'll hit that in a second. Danny Miller, Franklin Lewis, Ken Neiman, Brad Snyder, Ben Kellum, John Johnson, Kenneth Miyamoto, Andy Michael Baxter, Gareth Broadhead, Dennis Dunderdale, Anthony, Justin Blackburn, Garrett Larson, the infamous no name, Mark McCarty, Dennis Mickelson. George Gaini, Jason Brown, Richard Dragon, KG6WFR, Mark Chase, Corwin Crandall, and the Brew Crew. Thank you very much. I, I wouldn't be able to do this without all your help because doing this every week, man, <laughs> things break or I don't have what I need. So um, it means a lot. I can't tell you how it really helps keeping this going 
particularly with the way YouTube's ads are and all that stuff. I can't say enough. So thank you. And now, now that now that I shoved my video card in the oven, this thing is gonna die at any moment. So any extra little scraps I can put together to go buy a, another computer was is important. I appreciate that. Brian O'Neill says, "Posh Nazi, I have a club near me that is charging forty dollars." Wait, what? Hold on, hold on, hold on, now, hold on, hold on, hold on. Forty dollars, twenty-five dollars for manual, and fifteen dollars for a tech exam to get the license. Have to wait until. Oh yeah, that's fine. Uh, Fifteen dollars is usually the fee that they charge to um, to give someone a lesson or to sorry to let them test, and twenty five dollars for the manual, whatever it is. Not bad. That's, that's not bad. I'd do that. You can probably knock it out on a weekend. Yeah. I. Sure. I mean, I, the technician license here in the states is so easy that you'll be able to study for a month with the practice exams. You know, read in the evening. Take the practice exam, take one or two a day, one at your lunch break when you're at work. In a month, you'll be good to go. You'll be good to go. Yeah. So definitely, definitely just, just you can pay the $40. That's fine. The $40 isn't that much money. Okay. I think we got all the questions. Somebody gave double thumbs up. How do you do that? All right. So appreciate everybody. This is perfect. 815. That's about right where you want to be. Just a little bit over an hour. So everybody feels like they got their questions answered. What I like. Hopefully this was an interesting topic. If you have any comments, if you hated it, post in the, in the comments or reach out and talk to me directly. You can hit me up on Facebook, Facebook Messenger, Instagram, which I'm Hoshnasi on Instagram. Snapchat, I'm Hoshnasi on Snapchat. You can hit me up on the Discord. I don't know if there's a thing. I'm sure there's a thing that exists with them young internet kids these days um, that I am not on. But you can pretty much get me wherever. And if you want to email me, Hoshnasi at gmail.com. It's that easy. Okay. And OH, uh, OH8STN, I don't know if you have Discord, but it would be fun if you hopped over to Discord. I'm just saying that. I'm just throwing that out there. Zach posting the link right now. But anyway, love your videos too, buddy. Keep doing what you're doing. And ham radio stuff. Oh, somebody loves me. Love it. And he gave me a high high as well, so perfect. That's radio stuff. Right on, man. I know who you are. <laughs> All right. Okay, we're heading out. Take it easy, guys. See ya.